Welcome to a code report solution video for Advent of Code 2022, day four. We're going to be solving this one in APL. As always, we're going to skip the reading of this overly verbose problem statement. Here is our test data. We have basically two pairs of numbers that are separated by hyphens and a comma, and they basically represent ranges. So this is the range 234, and this is the range 678. And part one of this problem is asking us to identify which of these ranges fully contain one another. So it can go either or. So in this pair of numbers, you can see that 3 to 7 is fully contained inside 2 to 8, as is this example here. 6 is within 4, 5, 6. And these are the only two ranges. All the other ones are only partially overlapping, so we're going to return 2. So the question asks, how many ranges uh, contain fully the other one. And the second part of this question is how many of them overlap? So overlapping will obviously be a superset of the first question, but um, these ones, these ones, um, and the last one. So we should get four for part two. So let's hop over to our ride APL editor and solve this problem. All right, here we are in the ride editor. We've got our test data preloaded in here. So if we go data, as always, we don't have boxing turned on. If we turn on boxing, we should get this. And once again, if we use mix, we've got our data here. So the first thing we need to do, obviously, is to pre-process. So we're going to do what we did, I believe, in day one, which is we're going to use the fork that is not equals to uh, partition identity. So if you want to split a string on spaces, you know, cat, dog, you'll get the following. But in this case, we want to split on two different things, commas and hyphens. So the way we can do this is by building up a mask. So if we go hyphen and comma, and then we do, I believe, membership on the first of our data. And we might need to put a, yeah, we might need to put a swap in here. So this gives us a mask where all of our um, characters correspond to the hyphen and comma. And then if we in here put a, or I guess we can first, we can do it outside. If we just not this, then we have the mask of the things we want to keep. So we can then basically combine all this stuff and make a modified version of what we had with our partition. So typically we've got this is what we classically C for splitting on spaces, but now we can just modify this by putting a not membership swap, and this should give us the same thing. Perfect. And if we, uh, what do we want to do here? We want to execute, so turn our strings into a number for each of these, boom, we're done. So I believe if we uh, c compose that, so basically bind and then do that over data, there we go. So there's our parsed, and if we mix this, it'll look a little bit nicer. But there's our parse. So let's copy this and go back up to our data and just throw this in front here. And so now when we go data, we have our list of four numbers that we want. And from here, we can continue. So for our first solution, we have to check basically, does one of the ranges uh, is it fully contained by the other one? And so we're going to build a function called overlap. And so let's actually just, as we've done a couple times, just take one of these. And let's take, let's just take the first one, I guess, of data. And we're going to build a function. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put each of our values, A, B, C, and D. So we can use basically this destructuring. And if we put X here, I guess it's not going to show anything. But if we put a second statement in here, which we can use as the diamond, which is the statement separator, and we go A, A plus B plus C plus D, you can see that we now basically, this is just to show that we basically destructured our four uh, list, four element list into four variables, A, B, C, and D. And then from here, we basically just want to do a simple formula, which is comparing the lower bounds of each range with the upper bounds of each range. And we do that comparison with a subtraction. 
And what we want basically is we want one of these. So if, if we're hoping that A is the larger range and contains the um, AB contains CD, we want A to be smaller and therefore A minus C because C will be larger will end up being negative and we want B to be larger which makes D smaller so this will be a positive number. So we always want one of these terms to be positive and the other term to be negative. And if you multiply obviously two numbers and only one of them is negative, you're always gonna get a negative number. So we just basically need to compare this with zero. And if we do that, we should basically get our solution. So this is not overlapping, but if we plug in this for all of our data, we should get, yeah, zero, one, one, zero. And uh, that's basically our solution. So if we call our function up here, um, overlap. Actually, yeah, let's call it overlap. Maybe there's a better name for that. And then our solution A is just going to be the sum of overlap applied to each of our datas. So if we go solution A data, we get two, perfect. And we can very quickly then solve the second part of this problem by basically changing this. So we now no longer want to uh, compare the lower bounds and the upper bounds. We want to compare sort of the one of the lowers with the uppers and vice versa. So A with D and B with C. And I believe if we do this and we go up here, change this to solution B, we should get four. And we're done. So basically, we've got our two overlap functions, one for fully overlapping, and then one for um, partially overlapping. And then we just have our two solution A's and solution B's. Beautiful. Well, actually, I didn't, didn't highlight that correctly. Technically, I wanted to show solution A and solution B. So pretty beautiful, pretty quick video, I think, that should only be about five minutes or so. Let's quickly hop over to GitHub. So I showed this in the last Avid of Code video. Feel free, I forgot to mention, feel free if you are also solving these solutions in BQN or APL or some array language and you want yours to be highlighted here, just open a pull request. But what I wanna highlight here is if we go to Jay Fode, who is the former CTO of Dialog, so a very uh, accomplished APL programmer, we can see if we zoom in here, that they basically, I was sort of inspired by their formulas. I did something a little bit differently at first and then rewrote my solution to correspond to theirs. But you can see that they've actually split. So we were using the uh, destructuring of each of our sort of list of four elements into A, B, C, Ds in the overlapping functions. But they actually just split each of the values into uh, an rank one array or a vector. And so then they don't need to do that for an overlap function. And theirs is a, a lot shorter, which is quite nice if you ask me. And instead of using partition, they're using quad S, which I am assuming is a split function, not super familiar with that. But uh, like I've said in past videos, if you wanna check out other APL or BQN solutions, feel free to check out this repository. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and enjoyed and have a great day.